Hello everyone and welcome back to Piano Secrets. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to practice Chopin's Fantasy Impromptu Opus 66. The first thing that you should know is that he's going to use a C sharp minor scale and C sharp minor is like this. C sharp minor right here. So what he does is going to start on the 5th degree scale, on this note, he's going to put it underneath and double up and the fantasy in front will start with an octave like this. And then from the 5th we go to the C sharp, the 1st degree, and then the fantasy starts. Notice that this is the same C sharp minor chord. That instead of being like this, we bring that E over here and we also add a C sharp here. And then we have two measures of that. So we have the fifth degree of the scale on G going to the one. So That's the thing that you should know first. And there are two ways of playing this. We could go to the C sharp and start slowly and can gradually faster, or we could start right on. Okay. For the next part, it's gonna be the same, uh, the same arpeggios on the left hand, and it's gonna be piano. It's true that this starts loud and decrease the volume because of the background. And now what we have is, it's going to be a piano, but I wanted to, everybody thinks this is uh, very difficult when they play it, but really it's two chords. It's the, the same C-sharp minor. You have to think on this chord. See, all you have to think is on the chord, the inversion of the chord, and adding a passing tones, the A and the G the first one and then if you think on the next version you have this so you see the two chords very clear one another so he's just playing with the versions here so that's what that's the thing I will do first try to relate this to the harmony that we know the C sharp minor chord and, and then what he does is combine it. So he has the left hand like this. And all we're doing is rotating towards E. And the right hand here. The rotation, the biggest rotation is when you go from G sharp, when you have the chord, which you have to do this. And then this. And these uh, close notes, you could uh, just don't need to move much. Then rotate, rotate again towards it. So that's how you get an easy touch. And as you get, I found that if you, on the first beat, you have a, a rest and then go, it's always easier to play a little bit louder here and then release. Okay. And for this measure, what we're going to do is solve the four uh, notes again, three. So we have this rhythm. One, two, three, 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 one. But the right hand has four. So to put both hands together, what we do is the C sharp first, right, left, right, left, right, and together. So that's how we do it all together. Now it's true that if you get the first one, the first notes, they say you have this. So you could do just that one. So you don't match anything, you play 
or everything by itself. Right, left, right, left, right, and together. Last time I do this. Once you match this one, you keep going the same way. Match. Same thing, right, left, right, left. Together. Right, left, right, left. So, at the end, if you play all four groups, you end up with this. It's true that after, after you place them, rhythmically it's still uneven on the right hand, but after you place them, you have to keep one of them steady. Let's say the right hand notes. And you let the left hand fall into place. And uh, from there you could start uh, practicing with rhythm. You could practice like this. Or the opposite. Or four notes. And then you have the whole thing. It's true that some people like to bring the bass on, and you should. The C sharp and the E. The first degree and the third is important to bring it out. So after this is going to change, we're going to use this chord, which is at D sharp minor 7. Um, then we invert it, we go to G sharp 7, and we come back. So it's important that uh, you do those three chords. For, for the right hand notes, we have a pattern which is based on this chord, D sharp minor 7, and we're going to see that we go up. This, when you get to the F sharp, you always rotate towards the F sharp, the fourth finger. And then we get to the B. So once we get to B, it's going to use a different scale. And also this one is only related to the chord. But once you get to B, this is E major. E major is like this. And so we started on the relative minor. And now it's mutating to E major. Okay, so we do the uh, page you're going up with rotation. We get to B. The and it's important when you go descending a little bit the movement. So when you do this, it's easy because it's going from B to E. But you get to the D, you rotate. You do two notes to the left, right, rotate again. Three notes to the left, rotate, rotate again. Because I hear many students complain because they get tense in that passage. So first we start rotating up. We get to the B. We go descending, rotate towards the thumb. Rotate towards F sharp. Two notes, left hand. Again, it's important that you look at those movements I did because they're very important, especially to maintain a hand in a relaxed position. So then what we do is put it together the same way we did the other one, which is four four notes against three. Now, the thing is still uh, C-sharp minor again. So all we have harmonically is going to this. The E major and then the G-sharp where, where we have all this. Some people like to outline this line here, the C, the A. 
the E, the C. As you can see, the thumb always E, C. A, E, C, A. It's like an A minor. All the time. Okay, so now let's try to, uh, I'm going to play it very slow together this. And it's the same thing, so we played left hand by itself, right, left, right, left. Together. And then it repeats. Now the very next one is going to be the same. But the only thing is, instead of having a C sharp, we're going to bring that to an A. And also here. So we add in that note in it. And we end up with this. It's like the sixth of the chord. Okay? So we have left hand. right hand same pattern but with an A sharp in it so we'll do it remember that we always do the same thing by itself because there's a rest there and then we try to make it even Next one now, I'm just going to change a lot, so we're going to start first with the left hand. You could think of an, an uh, G sharp minor with that D on the bottom. Sorry, D. It requires always an open hand. Here for the scales, we have it's important that you think on the first note of each group and always uh, move in this way. Now you rotate towards B, rotate towards E, scale, and then all of these are rotations from one note to the other. Every time you don't do the rotation right, you will get tense. So I, I emphasize always uh, as that one of the very important things. And there's a little melody there. On each beat. Now, if you put it all together, it will be the same thing as the other. Okay, do it quickly. Now, this is another change of melody. Now, we're going louder. So, I always recommend this part practicing with octaves. And then what it does is add two notes, a C and a C sharp, for that part. So, what you have to realize is also there is a rotation from one key to another. For the whole passage. So 
uh, the whole line goes up to that point, and there is an, ac an accent on the thumb. So we have rotate each note. Then we repeat, but the accent is going to be on the top, so... Piano. For this passage, I think it's very unimportant. The only thing that you should know is how to move, really, because the line is very simple. And then adding those three notes to create especially like a background, you will have to move your hand from side to side. And we have a left hand there, starting on the score F sharp minor over A. We go to B, B7, E major. Again, B7 and E major. Same one now, B7, E major. Again, F sharp. Now he is gonna change. So what I'll do maybe is put it together very slow. Remember to emphasize the thumb. The climax here. It's important that on the repetition you do an accent on the top note. So try to bring the top note. And it's true that the very next part you could do it with octaves. So you could do this. And then it's just adding four against three. It's going to repeat, so let's go through that. And then here is going to change a little bit. The left hand, I hope you have the notes with you so you could take a look at what I'm doing. It has a lot of different chords in it. Now we have on the right hand now, same uh, pattern from before, and we'll do this. Rotate towards A, starts an F sharp, the next one. Rotate towards there. Again. And then here's chromatic scale turn. All the way down, chromatic scale with the on D. And then here you have more rotation. So the whole piece you have the first, the beginning is I think is the hardest when you have the big um, ascending arpeggio with scale combined. But then it pretty much is everything single rotation and more scales. And just watch for that because in this section it's very easy if you move correctly there.
Now we have the same dilemma, the four uh, notes against three here. So maybe we'll just play slowly the way it goes with two hands. towards it each time. And here too. So it's true that all these movements I exaggerate and then I make them smaller when I go fast if I do this one. Same for all of them. So always uh, check how to move properly. So now let's go to the second section, the slow part. The slow part, let me play a little bit for you. So after we have this uh, big, the, the climax here, double F, which is fortissimo. <laughs> so it repeats again so it's important to know that we're going for C sharp minor to D flat so after we do D flat I paid you now all these notes come from this chord so you have the D the A flat the D again F and all the way up here extended and then piano notice here the chord is an A flat major the fifth chord is going there so he makes up the melody on A and to add tension he add that G sharp in it which would be A flat 7 but still over D so it creates that beautiful uh, tension here. And then he releases to uh, back to D flat. He does a top melody, accent, and then goes through different chords here. So the chords are this one. Going to D flat, to A flat, to D. So it's important you practice like this also. A flat again. So if we split it now, back to A flat. G flat major now for the B flat. This is B flat major chord. Flat seven E 
flat minor, F, same chord from before, E flat minor, A flat 7, and D. Ornament, and back to A flat. Creates tension with this chord again, and it goes back to the theme. So we have A flat to D flat, release. It creates tension, release again. G flat, B flat. You could bring those. tension same now and now there's like a, a little bit of a happier tone when it started on a flat. And it goes back. And this repeats several times, two times the same theme. And I find that the A flat, we have A flat on the left hand, trill, E flat 7 here. Back to A flat. Here you have the C sharp minor again, but it's a D flat minor. E flat seven to A flat, and then G flat, E flat major. repeats everything and it's gonna end right there the second part after we do go through several times on um, the same theme and it's gonna go to an ending so it's gonna repeat uh, the whole first theme back to that but also at the end it's gonna have a melody and an ending it's gonna use the same rotation we used before the ending here left hand melody and the song is gonna end with two or pages at the end Again, to uh, symbolism, uh, the romanticism to end the song like this, to save the artist from agony, like many other pieces that uh, from Chopin. I hope this video was helpful, and if you enjoyed, subscribe. Thank you very much.